Like my dad, I'm a bit of a jack of all trades. I've had training and or experience in gardening and landscaping, in construction I've done framing, drywall, flooring, roofing, concrete, <laughs> and I've done my fair share of auto repairs. My dad always prided himself in having the right tool for the right job, which really influenced me to accumulate a plethora of tools over the years. If I was working on a project that required some sort of specialty tool, well, I'd have to go get it in order to do the job right. But as projects have come and gone and are now becoming fewer and farther between, I've started to realize that I have a problem. I've run out of room. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me. I'm Pastor Bert, and this is my jam. Feel free to hit that like button and leave me a comment below to let me know that you are here. You know, to make it easy, let's do a little poll. Which of you, or which of the following categories actually do you find yourself fitting into? A purger? A collector? Or a hoarder? <laughs> Put your answer in the comments and I'll help you find a support group. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> you know, no matter what group you have membership in, <laughs> there's often a deeper reason for how we handle the material stuff in our lives. For me, I've collected tools and never got rid of them, just in case I ever need them again. I'm a little embarrassed to say that I still have a very expensive specialty wrench that was specifically designed to remove one particular nut on an old diesel truck that I haven't owned for over 10 years. <laughs> Is there any other use for that wrench? Nope. Will I ever get another truck like that? Not likely. So why do I still have it? Well, because I feel it was too expensive to just throw away and there's probably no one who would ever need it to sell or give it to. So instead, it just takes up valuable space in my toolbox. You know, I've seen that most people continue to hang on to things from the past that are of no benefit for them today. And only hold on, and really it just holds them back from living their best future. Failures, fear, anger, unforgiveness, regret, insecurities, harmful lifestyles still plague too many people. And just going to church doesn't seem to help isol or insulate everyone from hanging on to these hindrances in their lives. In fact, the writer to the early Hebrews church addressed this very issue when he wrote, Let us put everything out of our lives that keeps us from doing what we should. Let us keep running in the race that God has planned for us. So the Hebrews author shows us that we need to take some responsibility when it comes to getting rid of everything that hinders our ability to live in a way that pleases God. That includes those things that weigh us down from our past. Well, how do we do that, you might wonder? Well, Jesus actually told us how, as recorded by someone who knew a thing or two about letting go of his past. And that was Matthew, the former tax collector. He writes, Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Folks, Jesus knows that it's hard to move ahead into the future he has planned for you when you keep dragging your past along with you. It's no wonder so many people are tired and weary because they don't seem to be able to give up the burdens from their past. And that's why Jesus says it. Come to me. Give them to me. I'll give you rest. I'll give you strength. And you'll find everything you need to live your best life ever. But be aware <laughs> that it doesn't happen instantly. 
I find so many people want an instant fix, but it's a process, and you must do your part while trusting that God is doing his part, which he is. Even Paul, who was a prominent leader in the early church and a miraculous example of how God can dramatically change a life, he admitted to the church that was in Philippi, Greece, that even he was still working through the process. He wrote, I know I have not arrived, but there's one thing I'm doing. I'm leaving my old life behind, putting everything on the line for this mission. If anyone had baggage from his past, it was Paul. You can read all about it in many of his letters that compose most of the New Testament portion of the Bible. But for Paul, his past no longer defined him. So he had to constantly push those things out of his mind, giving them over to Jesus, and keep his focus on where God was leading him. If you're struggling with your past, I hope this encourages you to keep on keeping on. Yes, it may be a process that may seem difficult at times, but I'm sure it was for Paul too. Yet in the end, we find that the struggle was worth it for him. For this is what he wrote to a young pastor that he had trained. He said, I fought a good fight. I have finished the work I was to do. I've kept the faith, and there is a crown which comes from being right with God. The Lord, the one who will judge, will give it to me on that great day when he comes again. I will not be the only one to receive a crown. All those who love to think of his coming and are looking for him will also receive one. Paul says that everyone, everyone who gives their past to Jesus and trusts him with their lives, well, they will finish their lives well. When they trust him with their future, they'll finish well. They'll fulfill the work God has for them, and they'll be rewarded for it all. Let me pray for you before I go. Father, thank you so much, God, that you care about us. I love what the psalmist says, cast your cares on the Lord, for he cares for you. And Lord, you do care. And Jesus, I thank you so much that you have invited us to give those things from our past unto you. Lord, they no longer have any effect on those who, who give their lives to you and follow you. You have saved them. The blood of your sacrifice has washed all those things away. And now we can live forever with you, a new life and an eternal life. And I pray for those that are watching this, Lord, that they would step into that. God, that they would turn away from the past, from those things that have hindered and held them back, from the sins that have tied them up, God, and turn to you, receive your salvation, and live for you from this day forward, constantly pushing those things away, trusting in you to, to give them the strength to keep moving forward into the mission you have for them. And God, they can look forward with joy one day, seeing you face to face and being rewarded with the words, well done, well done. So Lord, I pray your blessing upon each one as it, and help, pray for your help for each and every one of them to lay those things aside and to follow closely after you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me again, folks, and I hope you see you again next week. Bye for now.